Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro. I'm a bit under the weather today. Uh, not even gonna hold you, but there's decks to cover. One deck that I used to love playing and has kind of seen a bit of a resurgent recently since format is a bit open and you know, you can kind of get creative with what you're playing this format. And I mean this generally when I say I'm really happy with how this format has turned out and I hope it can stay like this post Phantom Nightmare, although I know it's not likely, but still, I'm really happy with open formats like these because it allows decks like Earth Machine to continue to exist. And Earth Machine was a deck that I used to pilot. Um, I took it to my very first regional. I had a great time. I only got like two wins, but that's because I didn't know what the fuck my opponents were doing. Like I, I had no idea how to play around or prep for stuff like that. So this was a top eight at a remote regional earlier this, this month. So both these Earth Machine deck lists um, that I'm going to be covering were actually from this month. So that's kind of like the theme of the video, you know, like decks topping this month. And uh, the I, I kind of just want to focus around Earth Machine because I used to be a really like this used to be the only deck that I piloted at one point. So I'm very familiar with the deck and I love uh, that it can still be used even even now in 2024. And we're going to be going through two lists that are slightly different, and you're going to see the differences. This is a more Infinitrack based build, so this is uh, relying more on the Metal Cruncher is something that's uh, where you're crutching more on Brutal Dozer, and like just you technically, I think you technically have more starters that get you into your engine, but your lines are also slightly more vulnerable to interruption because it's more linear, right? Like it's a more linear combo line, but you have more ways to get to it. Your starters are the three Metal Cruncher, three Harvester, three Brutal Dozer, three Heavy Forward, and three Machina Redeployment. That's 15 starters in a 42 card deck. Urgent Schedule is the starter going second, so that's 18 starters going second. It's a really consistent deck. It does have the tendency to break though, and that's why I, as an Earth Machine player, has kind of... I want to find a list that doesn't play Ballista. <laughs> I, the second that I feel like I can find that, I feel like I will reach Ascension. Like, I want an Earth Machine deck that does not need Ancient Gearbox at all. Unfortunately, I think, like, the one crutch of this deck is that you do have to play multiple bricks. So you either, it's kind of like Gate Guardian, where it's like you have to play, like, the fucking elements to make the deck work, right? Like, you're trying to get to the train exceeds, right? Like, it's really easy to get to River Stormer. Getting to the Train Exceeds is what actually makes the deck so difficult and hard to like maneuver because you have to set up like multiple level 10s and half the time you only have access to one of them. So you have to sort of set up this like resource loop with Anger Knuckle that at least guarantees that you will be digging more into your deck and not be losing access to that level 10 while doing so. Earth Machine is interesting because uh, they kind of just sit on a lot of big bodies like Citadel, River Stormer, usually number 81 is is who you end on if you have access to a train going first. If you don't have access to a train, you end on Anger Knuckle plus uh, Bullet Train. And Bullet Train lets you add back your resources from the graveyard. And I, I really love seeing the Road Roller here as well because Road Roller basically turns River Stormer into a, a mini floodgate where all your opponent's monsters have to be changed to defense and they lose a thousand defense as well so it can stop you from getting game like if you get interrupted or if you get trolled brutal dozer is usually your first search so you still have access into river stormer so if you get trolled early on you brutal dozer summon out road roller go into river stormer and then turn three road roller has a really good effect to summon itself back from the graveyard because whenever earth machine is tributed which half of them tribute half of them banish so it's very likely that this card can like extend even on top of being able to make rank fives. I just really wish, you know, like this deck would be a lot better if there was a level five that also had the ability to level to level increase like uh like Harvester or like Anchor Drill does. Like if there's a level five Infinitrack that could bring out another body and then increase the levels, that would be perfect. I don't know why they decided not to do that or why that hasn't been a thing yet, but that would be the perfect bit of support for this deck, I think. Because then you wouldn't need to play any more of the Dara Crane or, or the Bull Train. Not that you don't like playing these cards, but they are kind of bricky in a lot of scenarios. And the reason why we have the ratio of 2-1 here, because usually it's like 1-1, one one, uh, is with the Metal Cruncher. Metal Cruncher forces you to max out your most important Earth Machine monsters, right? So if you need access to a level 10, you have to reveal three different Earth Machines 
you have two Dara Crane and one Bullet Train, so you can reveal one of them and you get at least one of them to hand. And then once you get to your normal combo, uh, River Storm can search you the second one. Same thing for like Harvester, you, you play three because you want to max it out, it's your best normal summon. And then Brutal Dozer, you max it out because with Metal Cruncher, it's basically guaranteed that you get to add one from your doctor hand when you resolve Metal Cruncher. Also, Metal Cruncher works very well with the Burner Sylphs because basically if you draw this later on in your turn and you get a Burner Sylph as well, Burner Sylphs can summon this back from Grave and it can also activate on Special Summon. So you don't actually have to take the attack decrease, like he can be a 2800 body that you summon from Grave that can search you more Earth Machines. The Verner Sylphs kind of add something interesting to the deck because they give the deck so much extension and a, an ability to like keep playing. Um, even though it locks you into into only being able to use Earth monsters, initially I was a little skeptical about them. But like with the ability to uh, bring back Metal Cruncher and like Regulus, and then uh, Awakening Force ability here to like dump any Earth monster from your deck, as long as it's not the monster that you special summon back, is actually really helpful because that helps with the Road Roller. That helps with Bullet Train, that helps you get to Regulus, get to Fortress. There's a lot that Awakening Forest and the, the rest of these Verna Cells can do for your strategy, and they do kind of unbrick the gearbox sometimes, because at least it can go somewhere so you don't have to look at it in your hand the whole time. It's kind of a new tech to play the generator stuff. So uh, you start with the Levitane, right? So if you get access to an Anchor Drill plus any level five, like let's say Road Roller, uh, let's say you, you set it up so that you uh, banish Trencher, Special Summon back Anchor Drill, and then after summoning, after banishing Trencher, Road Roller triggers to summon itself back, and then you can combine levels to make them both level nine. Then you can go into Levitine and then Levitine can tribute itself and then take any two cards basically because it has two materials take any two cards from your uh, opponent's field and our graveyard to then summon your generator boss of eternity with those two materials and uh once per turn he can detach one and then each player draws one and then he gets to take a card from each player's hand to use as exceed material and he gains a thousand attack for each exceed material so basically each turn he will draw you a card and then he'll gain 1000 attack points like yes he does help your opponent dig deeper into their deck and like manipulate their hand but at the same time he's also helping you do the same thing so lost shadows just it's not it, the ability that it doesn't target makes it really hard to like plan around because uh on resolution it, it takes the cards it doesn't target it doesn't give your opponent that information beforehand for them to to, to do much about it assuming that you time her effect correctly and the fact that she tributes for cost as well makes it hard to like imperm her uh, or, or do anything to it. So again, really hard card to play around. Side deck is pretty straightforward. Skill Drain is a killer in Earth Machine. Skill Drain allows the deck to basically put out big, big bodies and then stop the opponent from being able to put out their own. Um, there aren't many decks that can really navigate Skill Drain in a format, especially when uh, Earth Machine, uh, once they get like Citadel in rotation or even Fortress and Citadel in rotation, it's it's hard for, for the opponent to like cope with that plus a skill drain, unless they're playing something like Runic where they can kind of maneuver around um, not being able to use their monster effects regardless. There's no SP in the side deck, although SP could fit in perfectly here. We got double Zeus. No Typhon, actually, is a little surprising to me. I, I I would think Typhon is like a good tech, at least for any deck that like wants to get, go for game or wants to, you know, just needs that extra push to like remove resources from board, but I guess it's not necessary. Maybe Pankotrops was good enough for them. Ghost Sister is kind of weird because it's mostly for time. I, I, I can't see any other purpose for this card other than just possibly to win in time. Uh, evenly is great, you know, for going second breaking boards. Like evenly plus like an urgent schedule could could go really hard for um, breaking down and then setting up your own plays. Control is just really good this format. From all my testing, from my experience at the regionals I went to this past weekend, Droll has just overperformed in terms of how good it is. And Pankatrops probably would be the same thing if I played it, but I don't, so. So now I want to show a slightly different Earth Machine list. This one was at the Austrian Open this past weekend, uh, whereas the last one was like maybe like one or two weeks ago. This one was like this weekend. So 
Um, I'm really happy to see multiple Earth Machine lists. And this one is really different because this one is based around the Machina uh, engine. We have the gear frames instead of the Metal Cruncher. So it's less focused on the uh, on the Infinitrax and more focused on being able to like use uh, bring out bigger bodies like Ruin Force, a more Machina heavy build. I think you still have, I think you technically have less starters, right? Because uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, twelve, only fourteen. The last deck had like eighteen starters. This one only has about fourteen, and we're playing one card more. Um, and we have the skill drains in main, uh, so it's definitely a lot riskier. I, I think like this, this, this list is is more of a high risk, high reward kind of list because. If you set up Ruin Force plus a Skill Drain, you pretty much can get the game because it's really hard to beat a Ruin Force without being able to use monster effects unless your opponent just like immediately bestials it um, once it hits Graveyard. So, But this is a good format for Ruin Force because bestials aren't really being played that much outside of Runic Bestial or, uh, or like Dragon Link, you know, which is also not that popular at the moment. So. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can sort of dodge. I, I just think it's a good format to play this stuff because a lot of this deck's weaknesses are just not in rotation at the moment. So I think that really favors this deck a lot. Uh, we see the Vernisilf with uh, uh, Awakening Forest. I'm surprised to see Infinitrack Road Roller still here, even with the lack of Infinitrack names in deck. I think that signifies something, but I can't tell you what it is. Like maybe this card is a new staple of Earth Machine. Last year, when this card came out, I was in the Earth Machine Discord and they were roasting the fuck out this card. And now to see it in two lists back to back that have been maybe some of the most successful Earth Machine lists that we've seen in like a few months. It's definitely an interesting thing to see, at the very least. Uh, we see Cosmics in main. Cosmics are putting in work. Like if this is this past weekend, then yes, Cosmic was really good this past weekend. Um, I only had one in my list for the regional that I went to, and I honestly wish I had more because this this puts in so much work. Uh, tactics, talent, it's talents is still a mixed bag for me. I, I still think people are too smart. Um, this is mostly going second stuff, and that's if you draw it going second. Like especially in a 43 card deck, you're not gonna draw this often. Maybe only three to four out of ten games will you actually see this going second, and that's if you lose die roll. Seeing this going first is is even worse because now you're relying on your opponent opening a hand trap or something or some sort of interaction. And I just kind of don't like being in that scenario half the time because half the time you're not really doing anything. Like especially if it's like game two, game three, and they've already seen what your deck can do. They've already seen that your deck ends on like anger knuckle plus bullet train plus back row. It's gonna be very hard to like bait hand traps because they're gonna be like. I, why why would I use my Imperm now when I could just hold it, you know? Or maybe they've sided out hand traps and put in board breakers, so it's 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 just an awkward card sometimes. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying tactics is bad, but for a deck like Earth Machine that doesn't that does a lot of playing with itself and doesn't actually interact with the opponent a lot until your biggest boss monsters are on field, like Citadel or like Earth Slicer, then it may be hard for you to actually bait something with the tactics. Um, SP Little Knight is in this list. It's actually really good to see. Goliath makes SP Little Knight way too easy. Goliath being here with the SP kind of like, again, there's not enough Infinitrack names here for me to really have faith in this. So I'm not sure where exactly you're making the SP. My whole thing is, is that half the time that I played, that I played Earth Machine is that I barely had enough monsters to like do the full combo and then to like have extra monsters to like make random things was like not that often you know like the ability to make an sp is always going to be there but oftentimes it will be with the de with the decision tree of should i do this or should i do that should i do x or should i do y half the time you won't be able to do both and you kind of have to pick and choose in those moments so i don't know if sp is the best card um in earth machine simply because of it, uh, Earth Machine's inherent restrictions on top of the Vernocells stopping you from using uh, non-Earth monster effects for the turn. The side deck looks really solid. This this side deck looks better than the other one, actually. We see Bell, Droll, DD Crow, which great against a rollback. 
great against Fire King. It's great into a lot of matchups, great into Tier, great into Orcus. Oh, it's kind of great into Orcus. Runic, it's okay. Pearly, it's good. Uh, Fetter Duster for like Labyrinth. Is, oh, yeah, and it's good in, into Labyrinth as well. Um, then we have Triple Evenly here, and Evenly just allows you to break boards very simply. And Triple Judgment, Triple Judgment to like stop the opponent from being able to interact with us. Or, like, to start their turn, possibly. And that was really interesting. Maybe even to protect Skill Drain. I think, like, Skill Drain might, might have carried this deck. It's hard for me to see this deck doing well without Skill Drain in it. Because there's just too many points of, like, interaction where your opponent can stop you. Like, that's why I don't like Platinum Gadget either. I, I, I like, these two links by themselves aren't bad. But when put into the Earth Machine combo, they just make your combo too vulnerable to, like, Interruption. So that's why I personally didn't like playing these when I was playing Earth Machine. And I stuck more with like the first build, the like uh, Metal Cruncher. Um, just like Dozer control build. Instead of trying to like branch off into more of the Machina package. So good stuff to both Earth Machine players. Let me know what you guys think about Earth Machine in the comment section down below. Um, it's great to see Earth Machine thriving in, in 2024. And I hope... You know, especially with the reveal of that new XYZ monster, I don't know if you guys saw it. I might as well cover it since it's kind of an Earth Machine card. So, we got Technolo Valdra. That's his name. Sick ass artwork. It's a rank 10 Dark Worm Exceed. He uses 2 plus level 10s, and when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can detach one, negate the activation, which, unlike Regulus, who negates effect, and then it gets to detach one more if you want to destroy one card on the field. Now, it won't destroy the activated card, so if it's something in hand, like in Nibiru, the card will stay in hand. But that's not a big deal, right? Uh, then you can destroy one card on the field. The, uh, the fact that you get the choice to choose is kind of great, right? Like if they activate a normal spell, they lose two cards off of this effect. And it's non-targeting as well, so that's pretty cool. But you don't want to use both his materials, I don't think when using that effect because when he attacks you can uh and, and he has material you can pop a card on field that may be significant to hold on to unless you really feel like you need to negate and destroy on the time like at the same time i feel like you may want to hold off on that just go into battle phase attack and then only use his xc material to negate stuff if he was a machine it'll be really easy to get goliath to like reattach to him so you wouldn't even have to worry about that um, sadly, he is not a machine. It is a worm. So, uh, Vol Draft over here is really significant. I think, like, this may keep Earth Machine on the map post Legacy of Destruction. I know Ancient Gears are going to come out in that set, and that's not really Earth Machine the way that Earth Machine currently plays, but it's still an Earth Machine deck. Like, just by, just by its category and, you know, the actual attributes of the cards like the actual types of the cards that you're using but, but ancient gear won't be able to play this uh like regular dozer control earth machine will probably be using this card on top of possibly you bell or i don't know if eldritch somehow makes a comeback this format then you can get i guarantee you'll see this card in eldritch but this won't be out in, a, in america till like late april early may i believe it could be wrong about the release really date of like Sea of Destruction, but yeah, uh, a really interesting card for Earth Machine. Another negate on top of Regulus, so now the the, the deck just doesn't have to re rely on like floodgates and stuff. Maybe now we can play a little more ag ag aggressively going first instead of a little more helmet. This is Vinny Boy Nisho here signing out.